let's start here. Alrighty. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of composing in multiple dimensions. Part 17, Objects. In today's episode, we completed a pleasing first pass of our C3663 composition, which you just heard the ending of. In particular, we added the backbones and uh, identified the melody phrases, and we started experimenting with uh, labeling. Where is that? That's down here. Identified labeled sections, cadences, and backbones. You can see that here. This is a backbone 1A, cadence 1A, and that's an ambivalence. Um, we went ahead and made a score recording, and we made several recordings. Here's that recording. This is the um, And as you can see, we have a backbone going all the way through and the and, uh, cadences are annotated all the way through. And we also annotated whether the figures went up or down flat or up flat. And that was all up and this was up flat. And then there were a couple that were like an arc down, flat, up, you know, forgot the other up. And so we actually made an inventory, quick inventory of all the backbone phrases we had, and we verified they were all unique. We don't have any duplicates in there. And, and then the last time we did that, everything was up and it was boring. That was in the last series. So we realized we had to balance the up and the down and the flats and, but fortuitously we, we did that when we when we looked at all of the flats and ups and downs we had a nice pleasing balance so so we ended up liking this composition so we so we said let's go ahead and start working with animations and the first thing we did was go into our little program and it comes with a built-in cube animation and so we messed around with that And basically, we just took the backbone and mirror inverted it. And so those two cubes are just mirrored horizontally and vert vertically and rotated so that they, and then trailed. So that was cool. And at the same time, remember, we want to create our own 3D object. So we went back into our 3D platform, which is here. And we took our chain link. You may remember we've been doing this thing. So in our 3D world, we were able to get a aural animation effect. But this time, we wanted to take one of those chain links, and we did. And we, we had practiced this in a previous stream. And you can, you can do a save as and save it as a collada file. What is a collada file? A collada is a 3D model file. And we looked it up and verified that in our magic performer animation, it can understand collada files. So sure enough, we saved it as a collada file. And we got a chain link uh, down here, right there. We had, we had a flat one and one this one that was turned 90 degrees. So then we went back into our animation program and said, can we just duplicate this scene and use the chain link? And the short answer is yes, we can. Oh my god. 
So we're going to show that in a minute. The other cool thing we did is we, we were really wanting to get um, trail effects that we can aim anywhere. Usually we could either only aim them to the right or to the left. And so after quite a bit of experimentation, we've kind of figured out how you can aim a trail from an object, in this case a triangle, which looks like a rocket re-entering the atmosphere or something. But we verified that we can we can rotate it and, and make it look like it's going in any direction we want. So that's cool. That's a new result. So what we're going to do is play the chain link animation for you, and then that should bring us home. Uh, oh, the other thing we did is we said, well, as long as we're going to change to the chain link, can we please uh, take our backbone and canes files and run them through the special effects processor as we like to do. So this is now front left and it is uh, up five feet. Look at the 3D view where the backbone is front left and up five feet. And if you look at this thing, we've rotated it to be to the right right rear and uh, down five feet. Again, it's a very subtle effect and it's hard to hear, but then we exported that and in here we used that as our, we used that one. That's this one, the backbone FL cadence RR instead of using the regular one. So that's what we're going to play for you. Here we go. We'll need the mic while we're doing this. So what we do like about this is that we successfully uh, created our own 3D um, lotophile model. So we bragged about that a little bit over here. Yay, yay. Um, we do notice that when you play this, it uh, the one link is kind of casting a shadow on the other. And what would be really kind of cool is to do what we did here where we with the link the chain links are actually linked up into a chain so not sure how to do that I'll put that down as an idea next time and we make the magic links uh, overlap without totally hiding each other because we tried one method and it just one just disappeared so that was that was not good so this concludes today's stream uh, additional ideas for next time are uh, more work with the composition this thing extended ranges we like to break out of the core octave that we're in Every, everything we're in over here is is in pretty much one octave which you can see it's in that octave C4 to B4. So it'd be nice to get out of that. We can do that, we've done that before. Fast figures, so these are all half notes but have uh, quarter notes and stuff um, and extending the structuring. So this, this is a 
relatively pleasing structure, we think. Uh, it's, it, it feels like natural sections, but we've also deliberately labeled them and used these double bars to show the pieces of like a chain link, if you will, that we could duplicate some of them and have a repetition and then go into the next piece and um, extended structuring is what that means. Also, we're wondering if it might not be fun for the next time we go to open mic, if we could have uh, have a kind of a piano kit. So take and, and have a set of chain links or something, each one of which plays a tone of a scale and give it to people and they can res it drag it out into their their where they are and you know have a 3d piano um we also need to learn more about how these vectors relate because the first time we tried to ro rotate this thing so that it would look good in the animation we did it this way and it didn't come out right we actually had to rotate it this way so in the 3D world, those those don't interact the right way, but in the animation, uh, they do. They do turn 90 degrees to each other. So that's what that's about. Just for grins, I okay, already showed that one. So do tune in for our next episode to see what happens. Uh, we appreciate your time, attention, curiosity, and interest. Shout outs to Boaz Meckham for multiple questions and Doug Duo Glassics. We appreciate your comments and come back, take care, and keep on streaming.